Hello Immortal News family, and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours we have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents, and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 8. Maureen Mo Henry, a revered figure in the post-production world of cinema, passed away at the age of 67 due to complications from liver failure. Her remarkable career as a negative cutter spanned over half a century, during which she left a lasting impact on some of Hollywood's most iconic films. Starting with the cutting of negatives on Steven Spielberg's Jaws in 1975, Henry's expertise and precision became an integral part of bringing cinematic visions to life. Her contributions to film were not just behind the scenes but pivotal to the art of film editing, impacting how stories were told and experienced by audiences worldwide. Her filmography reads like a who's who of modern cinema. From classics like Ghost, Heat, and Casino, to groundbreaking films such as The Fifth Element, The Big Lebowski, and The Iron Giant, Henry's meticulous work was evident. She was instrumental in shaping the visual narratives of these films, ensuring that each frame contributed to the larger tapestry of the story. Henry also played a significant role in blockbuster franchises like The Matrix, The Dark Knight, Shrek, and Spider-Man, showcasing her ability to adapt to various genres and styles. Her work on Million Dollar Baby, Babel, and The Blind Side further exhibited her versatility and commitment to excellence in film editing. In the digital era, where the role of the negative cutter has evolved, Henry's contributions remind us of the importance of traditional film techniques in a rapidly changing industry. Her legacy is not just in the films she worked on, but also in the standards she set for post-production in cinema. Survived by her son Logan, and celebrated by countless filmmakers, colleagues, and cinema enthusiasts, Mo Henry's legacy as a giant in the post-production community will continue to inspire future generations in the film industry. Tribute to Mo Henry Number 7. Peter Schickel, a renowned composer, humorist, and the creative force behind the parody persona, PDQ Bach, passed away at his home in Bearsville, New York, at the age of 88. His death, due to a series of infections, marks the end of an era in the world of classical music parodies and leaves a legacy of laughter and inventive musicianship. His unique blend of comedy and classical music brought a refreshing and irreverent perspective to a genre often perceived as serious and inaccessible. He won the Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album four consecutive years from 1990 to 1994 and received another Grammy in 2000 for Best Classical Crossover Album. His work aimed to break down the barriers of classical music stuffiness, much in the spirit of Victor Borges. His fictional creation, BDQ Bach, supposedly the last and least of Johann Sebastian Bach's 20 children, allowed Schickel to explore the absurd and whimsical aspects of music. Through PDQ Bach, he claimed to have discovered various unusual compositions, often humorously attributing their origins to taverns frequented by the fictional composer. He was not just a comedic genius but also a serious composer in his own right, having written scores for film and Broadway. His contributions included more than 100 symphonic, choral, solo, instrumental, and chamber works, which were performed by esteemed institutions like the New York Philharmonic and the Cleveland Orchestra. His versatility extended to folk music, with arrangements for artists like Joan Baez and Buffy St. Marie. The release of his first PDQ Bach album in 1965, Peter Schickel presents an evening with PDQ Bach, captured live from his town hall concert, introduced his unique humor to a wider audience. His other PDQ Bach recordings continued this tradition, winning him accolades and admiration. Beyond his PDQ Bach persona, his serious compositions such as his contributions to the 1972 science fiction film Silent Running and the Broadway review O Calcutta 
showcased his range and depth as a composer. Peter Schickel is survived by his wife, daughter Carla, son Matthew, and two grandsons. His legacy lives on through his innovative compositions, both comedic and serious, leaving an unforgettable mark on the worlds of classical music and comedy. Tribute to Peter Schickel. Number 6. Juan Cruz, a renowned artist whose vibrant murals brightened the city of Syracuse, passed away on January 10th at the age of 82. His life was a remarkable journey of redemption, artistic expression, and community engagement, leaving a lasting impact on the city and its residents. Born in 1941, Cruz moved from Puerto Rico to New York City at the age of five. His artistic talents were evident from a young age, a passion he pursued throughout his life. Despite facing significant challenges, including a period in prison, Cruz found solace and purpose in art, which became his salvation. His involvement in an inmate art program following the Attica prison riots in 1971 was a turning point. Art became Cruz's escape, a way to transcend his circumstances and express his inner world. He honed his skills across various styles and found a unique voice that resonated with many. His talent gained recognition even while he was in prison, leading to a successful campaign for his release in 1975. Upon his release, Cruz dedicated his life to art and community service. He was instrumental in initiating mural projects in Syracuse, working with young apprentices and brightening up neighborhoods. His work not only beautified the city, but also provided a platform for young people to learn, create, and express themselves. His murals were more than just artistic expressions, they were visual narratives that celebrated community spirit, showcased local culture, and sometimes sparked important conversations about representation and identity. His mural at Skitty Park is a testament to his belief in art as a medium for truth-telling, regardless of its nature. In his later years, Cruz continued to impact the community, including restoring his mural at Onondaga Commons and becoming the first in residence of the Near West Side Initiative. His return to Puerto Rico and his visits with family were cherished moments that highlighted his profound connection to his roots and loved ones. He survived by his daughter Mia, son Omar, and two granddaughters. His legacy lives on through his art, which continues to inspire and uplift the Syracuse community and beyond. Tribute to Juan Cruz. Number 5. Sean Barber, a Canadian pole vaulting prodigy and a world champion, passed away at the age of 29 due to medical complications. His untimely demise at his home in Kingwood, Texas, leaves a void in the world of athletics. Renowned for his exceptional skill and sportsmanship, Barber's passing is mourned by the sporting community worldwide. Born in Las Cruces, New Mexico, Barber held dual allegiance to the United States and Canada, thanks to his father, George, who was born in Ontario. This unique background enriched his perspective and approach to the sport. Barber was the Canadian record holder in men's pole vault, having achieved an astounding height of six meters in January 2016. This record, a testament to his athletic prowess, remains a benchmark in Canadian sports. His crowning achievement came in 2015, when he claimed the world championship title in Beijing, China with a remarkable performance of 5.90 meters. This victory not only highlighted his talent, but also established him as a force to be reckoned with on the global stage. His collegiate career was equally illustrious, having won the NCAA outdoor title in 2015 for the University of Akron and securing back-to-back -back indoor titles. In 2016, Barber represented Canada at the Rio de Janeiro Olympics reaching the finals in an event marked by intense competition. His journey to the Olympics and his performance there inspired many aspiring athletes, both in Canada and abroad. Remembered for more than his athletic achievements, Sean Barber was a person who always put others ahead of himself, as noted by his agent Paul Doyle. 
His kindness and humility made him a beloved figure among his peers, mentors, and fans. He is survived by his mother Anne, father George, and brother David. As the athletics community mourns his loss, Barber's legacy in pole vaulting and his contribution to Canadian sports will continue to be celebrated. Tribute to Sean Barber. Number 4. Robert D. Gaylor, a distinguished figure in the United States Air Force and the 5th Chief Master Sergeant of the U.S. Air Force, passed away on January 17th at the age of 93. His illustrious career and contributions to the military, spanning over three decades, exemplify a life of service, leadership, and dedication. Born on May 8, 1930, in Bellevue, Iowa, Gaylor spent his formative years in Indiana. He entered the United States Air Force in September 1948, embarking on a journey that would see him rise through the ranks to become one of the most respected non-commissioned officers in the Air Force. His early assignments included roles in security police at various Air Force bases, showcasing his commitment and adaptability. His expertise and leadership were further recognized when he became an honor graduate of the 2nd Air Force Non-Commissioned Officer Academy. His excellence in this role led to him becoming an instructor, sharing his knowledge and experience with upcoming generations of airmen. In 1977, Gaylor reached the pinnacle of his career by being appointed Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. In this prestigious position, he served as an advisor on matters concerning the welfare and progress of enlisted members of the Air Force to the Secretary of the Air Force and Chiefs of Staff. His tenure in this role was marked by his deep understanding of the needs of enlisted personnel and his commitment to their well-being and professional development. Following his retirement from the Air Force in 1979, Gaylor continued to contribute to the development of leaders through his work with USAA, a Fortune 500 company. His legacy was further cemented when the NCO Academy at Lackland Air Force Base was named in his honor in 2006 acknowledging his profound impact on military education and leadership training. His life was a testament to the values of service, leadership, and commitment. His influence on the U.S. Air Force and the leaders he mentored will be remembered for generations to come. Tribute to Robert Gaylor. Number 3. Leo Carlin, a beloved member of the Philadelphia Eagles Hall of Fame and a pioneer in the sports ticketing industry, passed away at the age of 86. His remarkable 55-year tenure with the Eagles marked him as a cornerstone in the team's history and an influential figure in the NFL. Carlin began his journey with the Eagles in 1960 as a part-time member of the ticketing department for the NFL championship team. His dedication and expertise soon led to a full-time role in the front office in 1964. Carlin played a pivotal role in the Eagles' transitions from Franklin Field to Veterans Stadium in 1971 and then to Lincoln Financial Field in 2003. His contributions during these significant moments in the team's history are a testament to his commitment and vision. A nominee for the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2007, Carlin was instrumental in revolutionizing the way NFL teams approach ticketing. He helped the Eagles become the first team in the league to merge ticketing with computer data processing, a significant innovation in sports management. The Eagles organization and its owner Jeffrey Lurie remembered Carlin for his kind manner, incredibly positive energy, and likability with season ticket holders. Lurie praised Carlin's ability to humanize the ticketing process emphasizing his passion for serving the Eagles' vast fan base while maintaining a personal touch. This personal approach was not just limited to his professional life. It extended to his interactions with his extended family and colleagues, reflecting the depth of his character. He was more than an employee. He was an ambassador for the Eagles, 
embodying the spirit and values of the team. His legacy is not only in the innovations he brought to ticketing, but also in the personal connections he fostered within the Eagles community. His impact will be remembered for years to come in the hearts of Eagles fans and all who had the pleasure of knowing him. Tribute to Leo Carlin Number 2. Chad McCrary, a remarkable champion bodybuilder and an inspiration to many, passed away at the age of 49. His life was a testament to resilience and determination, having continued to excel in bodybuilding even after a motocross accident in 2005 left him paralyzed from the waist down. Chad's spirit and strength in the face of adversity left a lasting mark on the bodybuilding community and beyond. Born on April 1, 1974, McCrary's journey in bodybuilding was a story of triumph over adversity. The motocross accident, which could have been a setback for many, only fueled his passion and commitment to the sport. His transition to wheelchair bodybuilding was not just about personal ambition, but also about inspiring others to overcome their challenges and pursue their dreams, regardless of the obstacles. His brother Lance McCrary and Jim McMahon CEO of sports fitness brand Mutant, shared heartfelt tributes, highlighting Chad's contributions to the bodybuilding community and his unforgettable presence. McMahon's words, The Heart Hurts, resonate with many who knew Chad, reflecting the deep impact he had on those around him. Apart from his achievements in bodybuilding, Chad was also a motivational speaker, a licensed aviator, and a former paramedic. These roles showcased his multifaceted personality and his desire to contribute positively to society. His work as a motivational speaker was particularly impactful, as he used his experiences to encourage and uplift others facing difficulties. His approach to life is that his beast mode in bodybuilding, coupled with his ability to make others laugh and offer sound advice, made him a cherished figure. His mantra, to try and inspire others, was evident in every aspect of his life, making him not just a champion in bodybuilding, but also in the hearts of those he inspired. His legacy as an all-around good man and an inspiration to many will live on. Tribute to Chad McCrary. Today's top headlines. News 1. The Shakopee community is grieving the loss of Michaela McCarvel, a senior forward on the Sabres girls hockey team, who passed away following a car crash on December 26. McCarvel succumbed to her injuries at HCMC, leaving behind a legacy of selflessness and courage. In a heartfelt Caring Bridge post, her father, Dan McCarvel, shared the news of her passing and her decision to be an organ donor a choice that reflects her altruistic nature. Michaela's choice to check the donor box on her driver's license form is now bringing hope to several families awaiting transplants. Teammate Lily Schutz, who was also involved in the crash, survived the incident. Shakopee Public Schools acknowledged the tragic loss on social media, expressing deep sorrow and commitment to supporting the school community. A moment of silence will be held to honor McCarvel before December 26th night Sabres girls hockey home game against Eastview Lightning. The community's remembrance will serve as a tribute to Michaela's spirit and contributions, both on and off the ice. News 2. At 86, Anthony Hopkins is embracing both his health and his prolific acting career. In an exclusive interview, the celebrated two-time Oscar winner shares insights into his current state of mind and well-being. Hopkins, who stars in the new movie Freud's Last Session, expresses a sense of peace and contentment. Recently married for 20 years and actively involved in several film projects, including Netflix's Rebel Moon Part II, The Scar Giver, and the thriller Locked, he remains vibrant and engaged in his craft. Health-wise, Hopkins reassures, I've just had a medical checkup. I'm in good shape. 
This positive health report comes alongside a candid acknowledgement of his mortality. I'm aware of my mortality, he says, noting his desire to continue working for as many years as possible. As he reflects on his life and career, Hopkins finds joy in the simple things, like watching British detective stories, and maintains a sense of gratitude for the ability to keep working and staying healthy in his advancing years. News 3 Rabbi Zevelyn Charlop, an influential American rabbi and dean emeritus of the Rabbi Isaac Elkshanan Theological Seminary at Yeshiva University, passed away on January 16 at the age of 94. His long and distinguished career in Jewish scholarship and leadership left a lasting impact on the community. Rabbi Charlop's tenure at riots, spanning over 35 years, saw significant growth and thousands of graduates who went on to become rabbis, educators, and scholars. Recognized for his dedication, he received Yeshiva University's Presidential Medallion in 2008. A respected spiritual leader, Rabbi Charlop served the young Israel of Moshalu Parkway in the Bronx until its closure. He continued to contribute to Jewish education and scholarship, editing collections of Torah and Talmud novelli by his late father, Jekiel Michael Charlop. In his later years after the synagogue's closure, Rabbi Charlop lived near his children in Monsey, New York. His death marks the end of a remarkable era of rabbinic leadership and dedication to Jewish education. News 4. Spanish cartoonist and illustrator Trini Tintur, known for her significant contributions to 20th century comics, has passed away at 88. Born in Lida, Spain, Tintur rose to prominence with works primarily aimed at girls and teenagers, notably her acclaimed series Emma Es Encantadora, in collaboration with Andreo Martin. Her career began in Barcelona, where she quickly found success in various publishing houses, contributing to children's and adolescents' publications. Her work reached international audiences through Editorial Bruguera and Creaciones Editorialis, with her comics featured in German, Austrian, and British magazines. In 2023, Tincher was honored with the grand prize at the Barcelona International Comic Fair celebrating her impactful career in the comics industry. Her passing marks the end of an era for comics and illustration, leaving behind a legacy of pioneering work in a field traditionally dominated by men. News 5. Corey Broadus, the 24-year-old daughter of iconic rapper Snoop Dogg, has experienced a severe stroke, causing concern among her large social media following. She revealed this distressing information in an Instagram post, where she shared a photo from a hospital bed, expressing her shock and distress over the incident. Snoop Dogg, whose real name was Calvin Cordozar Broadus Jr., and his wife Shante, have two other children, sons Cord and Cordell. Snoop Dogg, a major figure in the rap industry since his 1993 debut, is known for hits like Gin and Juice and Drop It Like It's Hot, and his involvement in films and other ventures, including his 2018 cookbook, From Crook to Cook. The unexpected health scare of Corey Broadus at a young age has highlighted the significance of health awareness. Fans and supporters have been rallying around the Broadus family, sending messages of support and wishes for a speedy recovery. News 6. John Hurst, an English football legend known for his time with Everton and Oldham Athletic, has passed away at 76. Born in Blackpool, Lancashire, Hurst began his career with Everton's youth team and debuted in the 1965-66 season. A versatile player, he initially played as a striker before transitioning to center half under manager Harry Catterick. Hurst was part of the Everton team that won the 1969-70 league title, making 42 appearances and scoring five goals in that campaign. He also played in the 1968 FA Cup final and was Everton's first ever substitute in 1965. After leaving Everton in 1976, Hurst joined Oldham Athletic where he played until 1981. Following his playing career, Hurst continued in football as a coach and scout, contributing to Everton and Manchester City. His death is a significant loss to the football community as he leaves behind a legacy of resilience and dedication to the sport. News 7. Roger Thomas Forster, a pivotal figure in the British New Church movement and founder of Ichthus Christian Fellowship, has passed away at the age of 90. Forster's journey in faith began at Cambridge University, 
and extended through his service as an officer in the Royal Air Force. He was known for his innovative approach to evangelism and church formation. Forster's leadership in establishing the Ichthus Christian Fellowship in 1974 marked a significant contribution to the Christian community, blending evangelical ministry with social action. He was also instrumental in the global spread of the March for Jesus movement. Acknowledged for his intellectual brilliance and dedication to the Christian faith, Forster leaves behind a legacy of service and theological insight. He is survived by his wife, Faith, and their three children. News 8. David Boston, the cherished former owner of Boston's Bistro and Pub in Harrison Township, has passed away unexpectedly at the age of 69. Boston was a prominent figure in the local community and is fondly remembered for his contributions to the culinary scene. His Bistro and Pub, originally named The Sports Page, was a popular dining spot on North Main Street before its closure in July 2016. The establishment marked the end of a 35-year legacy that began with his father, Stephen Boston, who built and operated Gypsy Gardens Restaurant at the same location during the 1950s and 60s. Apart from his business endeavors, David Boston was deeply involved with the Magyar Club of Dayton. He was passionate about his Hungarian heritage, aspiring to share his traditional seasoning and kolbas with the world. A memorial mass honoring David Boston will be held at St. Rita's Catholic Church in Dayton. This will be followed by a celebration of life at the American Czech Slovak Club. The community mourns the loss of a man whose life was dedicated to sharing his heritage and enriching the local culture. News 9. Wendy Campbell, the esteemed former CEO of the Food Bank of Waterloo Region, passed away at the age of 53 after a courageous battle with cancer. Campbell, a revered figure in the community, was diagnosed with a brain tumor in 2022 leading to her stepping down from her role at the food bank. During her tenure, Campbell was a driving force in addressing food insecurity and uplifting vulnerable members of the community. Her dedication and vision were central to her efforts, making a significant impact over her 15-year leadership. In her final act of generosity, Campbell donated her brain to the Sheila Singh Lab at McMaster University, supporting research into glioblastoma a testament to her lifelong commitment to helping others. The community mourns the loss of a leader described as a brightest light and a fierce advocate. Tributes poured in from various dignitaries, including Kitchener Councillor Dave Schneider, Regional Chair Karen Redman, and Waterloo MPP Catherine Fife, recognizing her legacy and contributions. Number 1. Serge Laprade, a distinguished Canadian singer and host, passed away on January 17th at the age of 83. His multifaceted career in Quebec's entertainment industry spanned several decades, marking him as a beloved figure in Canadian radio and television. His journey into the world of entertainment began after completing his university studies in social science at Université de Montréal, alongside studying singing and theatre acting. His early work at the news service of radio station CJMS in the early 1960s laid the foundation for his illustrious career. As an amateur singer, he caught the attention of producers, leading to a series of successful singles and his first television broadcasts. His talent was recognized in 1964 when he was named Male Discovery of the Year at the Gala des Artistes in Quebec. Beyond singing, Le Prade established himself as a popular radio host, gracing the airwaves of several prominent stations. He also made a significant impact on television, notably hosting the game show Le Travail à la Chaine from 1972 to 1979 on the Radio Canada network. His versatility shone through in his roles at Tele Metropole and Television Quatre Saisons, known as TQS. His commitment to public service was evident in his involvement in charity telethons for the Canadian Cerebral Palsy Association and his foray into politics as a Liberal Party candidate during the 1988 Canadian federal elections. His film appearances, including in 100% Bio in 2003, and his farewell tour in 2011 to 2012 to mark 50 years in music, highlighted his continuous engagement with his audience. His discography, which included a dozen albums and nearly 40 hit singles, along with his performances, showcase a prolific career in entertainment. His legacy in Canadian culture is marked by his charismatic presence, his contributions to music and television, 
and his enduring influence on the Quebec entertainment scene, tribute to Serge Laprade. <laughs>